Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we'll do three things. We'll first talk about what is mean arterial pressure, which we typically abbreviate MAP. Then we're gonna do some calculations with mean arterial pressure, so we'll learn how to calculate it. And then we'll talk about the clinical significance of when it's out of the normal range. All right, so first of all, what is mean arterial pressure? So mean arterial pressure is a clinical indicator of the degree of perfusion from the systemic arteries to the tissues. Okay, so when we mean perfusion, we're generally talking about blood flow to peripheral tissues. So if we said that the muscles, that is skeletal muscle, was receiving high perfusion, that would mean the skeletal muscles are receiving a lot of blood flow. Okay. And remember that all tissues, regardless of what they are, they need sufficient perfusion to live because the blood that is perfusing to the tissues is carrying with it oxygen, glucose, other nutrients, and then also the blood is needed to drain the wastes from those tissues. And so the tissue is not going to be functioning very efficiently if the perfusion is low. Okay. So we need to have sufficient perfusion, but also not too much. And so mean arterial pressure is an indicator of this. Now, first of all, to calculate it, we have two formulas here. They basically say the same thing, except one's abbreviated. The first one tells us that in order to calculate mean arterial pressure, we have to first calculate the pulse pressure and divide it by three, and then add on the diastolic pressure. Because remember, we have both systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. But the question is, what is pulse pressure? Well, I can say the same formula for mean arterial pressure and just expand out pulse pressure. And so the equivalent formula, which we'll usually think about, is we take the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure, that's the pulse pressure, and we divide it by three, and then we add on the diastolic pressure. So let's look at this in terms of steps, and then we'll actually go into the examples. So in order to calculate mean arterial pressure, what we first do is determine the pulse pressure. All the pulse pressure is, is the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. And when we look at this, the systolic pressure is always going to be higher than the diastolic pressure. So this number on top, the numerator of this fraction, will always be positive. It will never be negative. So make sure you understand that. I also will have a separate video where we actually discuss the pulse pressure. And even though it might seem trivial to have a video where we just talk about how to do a simple subtraction problem, there's actually some clinical significance of the pulse pressure. So we first determine the pulse pressure, and then we divide that pulse pressure by three, okay? And then once we get that number, we simply add the diastolic pressure to that, and we get a number that's normally, at least for normal individuals that are healthy, going to cluster between 70 and 110, but we also have to remember to throw the units on at the end, which are in millimeters of mercury, MMHG, all right? So here's our three examples from the PowerPoint slide. We've got a blood pressure of 120 over 80, 140 over 100, and 75 over 50. And we're going to be calculating the mean arterial pressure for each of these. So let's start with the first one. So in order to calculate the mean arterial pressure, we're simply going to take the pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic and diastolic pressures. That would be 120 minus 80. And we have to divide that by 3. And then we'll add on the diastolic pressure, which is 80. And then at the end, we'll have to remember to put on the units of millimeters of mercury. So 120 minus 80. So you can see that here. Of course, that's 40. Then we're going to simply divide that by 3. And we get 13.3 repeating. Let's add on 80. And normally, we're good to just round this to one decimal place. So we're going to approximate this as 93.3. Um, since the 3 is repeating, sometimes they'll put the line over that. But you would be fine just putting 93.3. And then, of course, millimeters of mercury. And this would be my mean arterial pressure for our first example. All right, let's look at the second example, 140 over 100. So again, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. And then we're going to divide this by 3, and then add on the diastolic pressure, which in this case is 100. Okay. So in this case, we're again going to take 
the systolic minus the diastolic, that's our pulse pressure, so 140 minus 100. Again, 40, and we divide by three, and again, we get this 13.3 repeating, but this time we have to add on the diastolic, which is 100, so plus 100. And in this case, we get a mean arterial pressure of 113.3. As we're gonna see after the examples, uh, we'll talk about that this is actually a high mean arterial pressure and might mean something like edema or just overall high resistance in the systemic circuit of the cardiovascular system, right? Notice one other thing also, even though the pulse pressures between these two were the same, the pulse pressure here is 40 millimeters of mercury. It's also 40 millimeters of mercury here. But because the diastolic pressure is higher in the second one, then the mean arterial pressure is also higher in the second one. So even though we can have the same pulse pressure in two different examples, we may have an overall difference in the mean arterial pressure when the diastolic pressure differs. Okay, let's do our last example here. We have a blood pressure of 75 over 50. First, let's calculate the pulse pressure, which is 75 minus 50. And then we're gonna divide this by three. Then we need to add on the diastolic pressure, which is 50 millimeters of mercury. So when we do this, we're gonna take 75 minus 50. We get 25, we're gonna divide that by three. We get 8.3 repeating. Then we add on the diastolic, which is 50 millimeters of mercury, and we get a mean arterial pressure of 58.3 repeating millimeters of mercury. And in this case, as we'll see after we uh, go back to the PowerPoint, this is actually going to be a low mean arterial pressure. Typically our normal range is going to be between about 70 and 110 millimeters of mercury, so a low mean arterial pressure means that the tissues are not getting adequate perfusion. So let's now go back and conclude the video by talking about the normal range for mean arterial pressure. Now for normal healthy individuals who have sufficient perfusion of blood to their tissues, the mean arterial pressure should be approximately between 70 millimeters of mercury and 110 millimeters of mercury. If you had a mean arterial pressure that was less than 70, so something like 65, or something like we saw in this last example, that would indicate to a practitioner that you have low tissue perfusion, okay? And so whatever cells it is we're talking about are tissues, they're not gonna be functioning at 100% efficiency because they're not receiving enough blood perfusion, not enough blood, and so therefore not enough oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients that they need to function. On the other end, if we had a mean arterial pressure greater than 110 millimeters of mercury, that would actually not be good. You might think that, oh, we just have to have as high of a mean arterial pressure as possible. Well, it really is everything in moderation. If it's greater than 110 millimeters of mercury, that actually indicates that the blood is moving against a high resistance. And there's a number of conditions that could cause this. Uh, one example would be if we had aortic stenosis, um, which is hardening of the walls of the aorta from which the blood exits the heart. Um, another condition could be uh, systemic edema, which is the leakage of fluid out of tissues and into the interstitial fluid. That actually creates a higher resistance against which the blood still has to move or perfuse. Okay? And so if you're a clinician and you're looking at someone's mean arterial pressure, you would hope that it's going to be between these two values, between 70 and 110 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of what mean arterial pressure is, how you calculate it, and then knowing what the clinical indications of having a low one or a high one are. All right, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.